Okay, so chapter two, something. Uh, if you recall last week, I had nothing. So uh, I went away, like I said, and uh, did some work, and I came back, and now I have something to bring to the table. Uh, I've organized some bullet points for this episode. Uh, let's go through that really quick. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the script and uh, tell you what I've discovered with that. Uh, I'm going to share my reference folder. This is usually something that I do when I'm starting a job. And then I'll go through some of the thumbnails that I did over the course of the week. And then I have a, a new section called the, the comments section, where I'll go over some of the comments from the previous week. So here's my script. I don't use a script writing program when I'm doing this stuff. Uh, like an idiot, I, I do everything in Photoshop. So um, I wrote the script in Photoshop. <laughs> oh, Jesus. As you can see, it's one, two, three, and a bit pages long. Now, generally speaking, a page of script should usually be about 50 seconds of screen time. That's the rule of thumb, if it's formatted properly. Uh, I did a read-through uh, of my script. It was timed out to 12 minutes already. You know, the calculation here would be one page of, of my strangely formatted script equals two or three minutes of screen time. Uh, I'm going to have to edit the script down, or I'm going to have to... Uh, do certain things to, to cut the screen time down. I, I don't really think this is a 12-minute film. And this, is, this should be more of a five-minute film, I think. At any rate, so that's, that's the problem. The next thing I'm going to talk about is my reference folder. This is kind of what I, I like to think of, like, hit-the-ground-running kind of folder. So let's take a look. I've got, you know, this piece of artwork. This is my Peter Etcetera character that it kind of would like to introduce in some of these little shorts uh, as a recurring character. I like this drawing. It's, it's a bit whacked out, but you know, the perspective and it's a bit skewed. And this is kind of the stylistic direction I, I kind of would like to return back to here in these little shorts. Uh, I don't know why. It's just lately, all the stuff, all the little stories I do seem to take place inside a car. I don't know why. It's just the way it is right now. So um, there's something about this drawing I kind of liked, uh, you know, uh, the line quality, you know, the just the general kind of looseness of it, I think is kind of nice. It's not overly detailed, you know, so uh, this is kind of the direction I think I'd like to go in. <clears throat> this is something from the Pear Cider and Cigarettes film. This is some other uh, bits of reference, you know, just, just from, uh, from Google that I've kind of gathered as I've going through this stuff. This is from The Matrix Reloaded. Uh, it's a car driving down the wrong way down the highway. Road rage. Now, here's a bit of reference um, that I found. It's from a fellow uh, that I'm following on Instagram. His name is Rakaju. So I reached out to him directly and I, I said, look, uh, do you mind if I give you a little shout out here on my little video? And, and he kindly uh, uh, agreed. Uh, give him a follow. You know, uh, give credit where credit's due. And then some uh, locational reference from Google Maps. Some kid taking a bong hit. I really like this, how his arm gets big here. Hand reference. I sort of struggle drawing hands. Look, I'm going to be perfectly uh, open and transparent about my working process because I think uh, that's, that's, you know, what this whole thing is about. I'm starting off with nothing, and I'm going to approach my own project like a real job, right? And, um, and uh, I'm going to show you exactly how, I, how I'm going to work through this whole thing, and at the end of it, I'm going to have a finished film, and you're going to see all the steps, all the, all the painful steps along the way uh, to, to uh, completing a film. Hopefully that'll make for some interesting content. So that's in the reference folder. Okay, so like I said, I went away, I, I did some drawings, I did some thumbnails. That's kind of the, the normal way that I, that I work on this stuff. So from the script, I, I um, did these little drawings right here, scanned it into Photoshop. And uh, so let's open up Photoshop. Click. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Okay, so I brought my scans in. I got one, two, three, four, five, six pages. Um, 
I've got an alternate page there. So the first thing I did, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is because uh, these um, drawings aren't that dark is I put a little adjustment level on the top, which makes it all a little bit darker. So, okay, now this is, this is sort of uh, some technical stuff, but the decisions you make now are gonna uh, really uh, have an effect later on down the road here. So let's open, uh, we need to format these thumbnails into a new document. So I'm gonna go new window, new window, and uh, we want like normal uh, aspect ratio. So let's go with this 1920 by 1080, and we want 72 DPI, and you need 16 bit. I don't know why this always defaults to 8 bit, but you need 16 bit. 1920 by 1080, new document. It's got a white background. Now, because everything these days is, uh, you kind of got to format it for 4K, I'm going to up res this document. Let me just move this over a little bit. Okay. I'm going to up res this to 4K. So let's go to image, size, 1920 by 1080, 4K, 4,000 pixels across, and uh, uh, it's going to keep the same aspect ratio, but it'll just be up -rezzed. There you go. It's, these files, will, they'll start to get pretty big once you start to save them out, but, I mean, it's better to have the resolution there from the very beginning. Okay, so I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to select all, edit stroke, black. Now... I'm going to tell you why I did that. I'm going to go to canvas size and let's go back to pixels. I'm going to add a thousand pixels onto each dimension. So I'm going to make that 5,000. I'm going to make this 3,250. Okay. Now I've got my aspect ratio in the middle and I've got some frame around it. Uh, Cause I like to have a little bit extra frame when I'm doing the layouts. Um, in case I want to uh, move the camera around or reframe stuff. Uh, that's just the way I like to work. So this is my document. This is how I do all my layouts. So let me just do a little bit of labeling here. Let's call this white. I always like to work on a white background. And I have to, my top layer is the, the frame. Oh, I should call it frame frame now okay so this is this is the the destination document so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, copy merge shift command C and I'm gonna paste it into this document here so I'm gonna paste every frame into the destination uh, document there you go Let's get this frame off. Now let's just sort of stack them all on top of each other here. And uh, I'm going to uh, just enlarge them all by the same amount. Uh, that's all of them. Let's turn this back on. Edit, free transform. Put that in here. Enlarge it. So now they're all enlarged by the same amount. And then, um, let's just go back and take a look. Okay, I'm going to reframe this stuff a little bit. Like this. Remember that matrix reloaded reference. Okay, that's the road rage. The girl in the passenger seat. And the final frame here. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna continue um, formatting all my storyboard drawings into this destination document, um, which is sort of the first stage in doing the layouts. So 
Um, I'm just going to uh, put this on, uh, on uh, time lapse to go quicker here. Click. Okay, so um, I finished um, copying and pasting all my thumbnail drawings into the destination document here. Now I'm just going to uh, save it out and save this as uh, frames three. I, now I don't really need these thumbnail drawings anymore. I can put that document away. And now everything is kind of here in this frames folder. And I went through and um, I numbered all the scenes already. So um, I've got uh, scene numbers and frame numbers. And it looks to me already like I've got 15 scenes. It's almost a page of script. So it's kind of giving me an idea for how many uh, scenes, uh, this whole thing is going to take. I mean, um, I guess the calculation on that would be, I'd have like 50 scenes in this whole thing. And, you know, it's going to take me a while to do it. So, um, I, now that it, everything's here, I'm going to show you the story. I didn't show you the script because I didn't want to sort of spoil the story. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of torn between uh, not spoiling the, the surprise of seeing the story for the first time. But on the other hand, I'm, I'm trying to... Um, I'm, I want to sort of be able to share the process with you. So quite frankly, I'm not sure really exactly how much I should share. But part of me thinks, oh, you know, screw it. I'll just maybe share the whole thing, you know, on this first little short. So, you know, um, I'll, let me run through the story. So it starts off with black, and you can hear tires screeching and horns honking, and uh, people are yelling, uh, and then it goes to this first frame. You remember that Matrix Reloaded um, reference I had in my reference folder? Well, that's what this is for. I mean, I can't really draw cars out of my memory, so that's why that stuff is kind of helpful. So then you can see the hand on the wheel here. So... Um, let's call him Peter. Peter's driving the car and he's going the wrong way down the road and cars are swerving out of the way and he, he uh, kind of turns the car this way and this guy gives him, you know, gives him the fuck you finger there because uh, he's driving the wrong way down the highway and then cut to the girl in the passenger seat. Let's call her Randy. And Randy's freaking, she's freaking out and she looks at him. She's like, what the fuck? What are you doing? And you cut to this guy. I did this drawing. I was quite happy with that. Just the, the weird proportions and everything like that. So um, he's like, he, he doesn't really have an answer. And she sort of gives him that scornful look. And then we cut closer to him. And the camera pushes in. And the background fades out. It goes from the interior of the car to like a white background. And then some psychedelic music is, gonna, is going to, um, it's going to fade up. Let's say it's a Pink Floyd song. Uh, and then she says something and he turns. And, oh, well, you remember that, um, that reference um, that I uh, mentioned earlier in my reference folder from Rackaju? Well, you know, I did a straight up sort of redrawing it. But, you know, I'll redraw it later. I, I kind of wanted to sort of get into the spirit of, you know, that drawing. So, you, you know, you, you keep an eye on me. Make sure I don't totally ripped this guy off but let's just say you know I just redrew that right there so she says something from the bedroom she says Peter have you always been like this and we cut outside and the conversation continues and so this is a Vancouver location um, you'll know if anybody from Vancouver knows this East Van sign is pretty famous um, kind of a place in East Vancouver because I wanted to have some local flavors in this thing. Okay, so this is the exterior exterior shot. And then we cut a little closer on the building. And she kind of walks through the frame and uh, kind of comes up kind of close to him. Again, we've got kind of the skewed perspective. And she says, you know, have you always kind of drifted off into space like that? And we cut closer to him. And again, the music fades up again, that same Pink Floyd song. And the background fades out, and it's a younger version of him. 
and he takes a bong hit, and we cut to a different angle of him taking a bong hit, so... <laughs> that kind of sound. So it's a 13-year-old version of him, and meanwhile, this person sort of comes up uh, behind and sort of uh, enters the room through the window. He blows out his toque. So this person enters, it's a girl, and uh, she climbs in the window, and he kind of turns and walks over. And she falls down next to the table. And she, she straightens up in a different shot here. And she goes, Peter, guess what? And she's totally excited. And she says, I got great news. I got Van Halen tickets. Two of them. And then she, she, she goes, and guess what else I have? Okay, hold on a sec, Jack. And guess what else I have? And she says, I have these. I have these. Yeah. yeah. And uh, go to your room. I'm just almost finished. Okay, and I'm just kind of paraphrasing here. She says, and, uh, and guess what else I have? And she produces two little hits of, of LSD, some purple micro dots. And he looks, I mean, this isn't really the final character, but, you know, he's looking. And you cut closer on the, the two little tabs of acid in her palm. And then the camera pushes in. And as the music fades up again, uh, the little micro dots, they lift off the paper. And they, they kind of start dancing and they, they kind of pop <laughs> and fizz. Uh, and, uh, and that's it. That's, that's kind of all the work that I was able to do last week. Um, so that's kind of my little story. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the fruit of, you know, my labor for this past week. Um, you know, it's kind of a slow start, but at least I, I made some progress and I can kind of see where it's going. Now, looking forward to the next week, um, a freelance job came up that, uh, I couldn't really pass up on. And to be honest, I could probably use a little bit of a cash injection right now. Uh, just to keep me working, be able to, you know, to, to continue working on my own stuff. Generally speaking, and I know this, you know, from working on my Parasiter and Cigarettes film, is uh, I would work on my own project for three weeks, and then I would do a week of freelance work a month. And in that way, uh, I was sort of able to, um, you know, keep the wolves from the door and have some money coming in and still kind of work on my project. It was just kind of unrealistic for me to think that, you know, I could just work on my project full time, uh, you know. Um, so I won't be able to get a, a, an episode out uh, next week, so you'll have to wait another week here. Anyways, as I mentioned, uh, I have a new comment section here where I'm just going to gather up some of the comments from the previous week. I'll do it anonymously, so... Okay, so the first comment... I want to help. How can I help? I got quite a few comments like this uh, over the course of the week. Um, I mean, that's really nice, you know, to offer to help. Uh, the problem is I don't really have any money to really offer anybody. And I, I don't really like, I don't really like the idea of people working for free. But I'll tell you what, I mean, the way you could help is by following my YouTube channel. If you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, I think that'd be good. Uh, that'd be a good start. And also, um, I mean, I, I'm going to keep rolling out these, uh, these kind of edits and, but at a certain point, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to assemble, um, a, a tutorial where I'm going to get more into the, the specifics, um, of, of the animation pipeline. I'll probably do one of those a month. So, uh, at some point, uh, I'm going to put that, I'm going to make that available uh, at a certain price point. And, um, you know, uh, I don't think I'm going to do a Kickstarter or anything like that. But I, I think, you know, if I could offer up something uh, that might be of value and it was put it at the right price and I made it available, you know, that might just help to sort of uh, help me kind of monetize this project as I'm kind of going through it. So that's kind of my plan for this stuff. Stay tuned for those tutorials. Um, okay, the next comment. Uh, if the Peter mentioned means more Peter, etc., then hell yeah. 
Well, easy, easier said than done. You know, uh, I, the, the truth is, is I kind of went through, here's my Peter Etcetera character. Uh, I kind of went through and I actually did some thumbnails with that Peter Etcetera character, but it, it just felt really weird having him sitting in a car. He's, I don't know. I just couldn't make it work. Uh, and I just kind of leaned more towards a realistic character. But, uh, I mean, I totally wouldn't mind some feedback on this stuff. But, um, you know, I, at this point, I'm just having a hard time making this character work. That did it open doors? No. Part. I was concerned after the Oscar win. There was a long period of silence. Okay, well, I mean, that was true. Uh, there was a, a certain amount of activity that happened after the Oscars, and a lot of studios kind of reached out and made contact, and I kind of thought that that was going to open up opportunity for me to um, continue working on my own stuff, my own content, and that people might be interested in... Um, in uh, helping me with future projects. But the reality was that people were only interested in having me work on their projects, uh, which is totally understandable. I mean, I get it. And, you know, I, I don't always want to work on my own projects. I actually quite enjoying, I enjoy working on other people's projects as well. And it's totally fine. But, you know, uh, I like to do both things. So, I mean, that's the reality of that. Uh, anything we could do to help yeah just buy the tutorial you know uh, I'm trying to solve that puzzle too it's so fucking hard yeah well it's hard you know uh, I did a few things uh, it's like I said I, I'm going to just document the whole process of making a film and uh, I think in a way uh, I'm going to sort of create content as I'm sort of creating the content. Um, and I quite like doing these little, these little edits every week. And it's kind of keeping me focused on this stuff. And look, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm quite happy wandering through the prickle bushes first, you know. And, and if I could sort of clear a path, you know, and other people can sort of follow along and uh, maybe learn from some of the mistakes that, I'm, uh, that I'll be making. You know, I'll be open about uh, every little obstacle that I come across. And uh, I don't know. So, you know, I'm just going to invite, you know, you to sort of uh, join me on this journey as you're stumbling along in your own particular project. And, uh, you know, we, together we can sort of find the answers. <laughs> that sounds stupid. Yeah. Uh, I remember the days when you used to be a good artist and you didn't have to draw pornography to get attention. Uh, that's my favorite comment from last week, so well done. You get the Dickhead of the Week award. You know, but it's true. I, I mean, I've always prided myself, ever since I can remember, to the creation of good, wholesome content that's suitable for audiences of all ages. And... Um, you know, uh, I just want to say thanks for uh, reminding me that I, I should sort of probably, um, you know, uh, keep uh, kind of a high level of, uh, of integrity as I'm working on my stuff. So um, all I can say is uh, I'm sorry for disappointing you and uh, I'll try not to disappoint you in the future. You dickhead. <laughs>